which is a uh, Canadian based uh, uh, AI module that, that scalable uh, uh, spatial, uh, geospatial AI that cuts across uh, various sectors, focusing on easy to use geospatial algorithm uh, development uh, along with the deep learning based geo image art. SIR has been associated with uh, uh, Predict Matrix uh, incorporations uh, in Toronto, Canada. Uh, from uh, IIT Kanpur, sir has been the founder and CEO for the VAI, and uh, sir has also been the co-founder of Ikigai Club, which is uh, actually uh, an AI ML learning development skill knowledge and insight ecosystem uh, with a joint venture of India and Canada. Uh, Mishra sir has also been a, a business strategy analyst uh, for uh, Citibank and uh, contributed seminally to the end-to-end -end advanced analytics behind the transfer and wallet for Banamex. And uh, sir has also been a research associate uh, with the uh, IIT Kanpur and uh, uh, has uh, worked uh, uh, with uh, ISRO uh, for transforming control analysis of satellite by creating a single window for visualization and uh, inferences for pulling together different data feeds. So uh, it's been uh, an honor for uh, reading your bio. So uh, uh, it uh, would be very uh, pleasing. With the session, thank you. Sure. Sure. So I think uh, I'm getting a lot of these black boxes in on the screen. Uh, I don't know. Now it's okay. Yeah. Cool. Got it. So guys, I think plenty of you have joined in. I think you are mostly CS and AI ML students. So um, I think the topic is more to do with innovation and more on the software side. I did speak about the management of innovation from a technology readiness standpoint in the last uh, webinar. Uh, I'll be speaking more from a software aspect of what is required to innovate, right? And my personal journey as an innovator, I'll discuss that as well with you. Uh, so, um, but before we get into that, uh, I would like to ask you two, three fundamental questions. So, uh, who do you think is an entrepreneur? Can you tell me? Who do you think is an entrepreneur? Can they do that, please? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Nishant, uh, would it be possible for them to speak up? Yeah, sir. You're audible and uh, okay. the, it is, uh, the setting is open for all. Okay, great. Guys, I want you to unmute one by one huh? and speak and give me answers. So who do you think is an entrepreneur? Sir, I can tell, sir. Sir, actually, entrepreneur is who have an idea that's distinguished from the market, and it should not have a common idea, and uh, it means it should have not a common idea, and you, and the why we should use your my app than out than theirs means that competitive competition that are into and they can hmm okay what's your name my name is apur patra sir kya pehla naam kya apurva patra sir apurv okay yes, great apur so anybody else anyone else who is an entrepreneur Hello, I see almost more than 100 people. So who is an entrepreneur? My question is, can you define for me what who is an entrepreneur? No, and I'll tell you the relationship between entrepreneurship and innovation also, huh? because uh, it is around that only. Huh? So, okay, so, uh, Another question, okay? So, what do you think is a who, and what do you think is leadership and who who is a leader? So, and can you 
distinguish between an entrepreneur and a leader? Okay, so we will talk about three things. Okay, entrepreneurship, leadership, and innovation today. Okay, and all these are as lived. I have lived them, and I was very lucky to undergo a course of uh, undergo a course in uh, what we call as uh, leadership uh, by uh, by none other than Werner Herds. Uh, so it was a very interesting course that I underwent and. I would like to share that course and give that course and teach that course to you guys also. And there is no fee for such a course. The only fees for this course is your integrity and commitment. And uh, transformational for all of you, okay? So my first question to you is that, uh, so can you tell me, so my two questions that I asked you that who is an entrepreneur and who is a leader? And can you tell me what is it uh, that they uh, bring to the table, you know? So, yeah, any answers or should I give you the answer? Sir, I can tell, sir. Uh, sir, actually the entrepreneur are the those who have an idea, but they don't have any uh, leadership quality. But uh, sir, in, uh, both, it can tell the both entrepreneurs and leadership both. But leadership is that they, the whole, the leadership, have not to be an idea, but he is to have a uh, mm. and <laughs> leadership know that uh, mm. they they are all together mm. in leadership, and mm. they and leaders always support the person mm. in my way, sir. Okay, can I? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir, in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, entrepreneur is a person who has an idea and innovation and he puts work into it. And uh, with the help of leadership qualities, actually if an entrepreneur is a leader, then he will be able to uh, become a much better entrepreneur because entrepreneur can't work. Is it Harsh, sir, right? Harsh. Harsh, sir. Uh, yes, good. Sir. Please, please continue. Uh -huh. Sir, if uh, uh, an entrepreneur should be a good leader because if he can't uh, uh, promote his ideas to his fellow mates, they can't initiate it because mm -hmm. the main innovation uh, is comes from the entrepreneur because he's mm -hmm. the head. And if a head is a good uh, leader, mm -hmm. then he can uh, implement those ideas. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, he so can't what is what is what is leadership. then what is leadership? If so, leadership is a uh, leadership is a quality which in within a person, uh, which allows you to communicate and uh, boost the morale of your uh, team. If you are working in a team and if you are not a good leader, you can't. If you are not a good leader, you can't interact with them and you can't tell them what to do. If you are a good leader, then they will be boosted and they will not let you down. Because they know that if their leader is a good entrepreneur and is working hard for his dream, so it's their job to get his done, even if it's not their idea or something. So uh, if an entrepreneur is very good. Uh, yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant, Harsh, yeah. brilliant. So your definition of entrepreneurship might not be in place, but your definition of leadership, I can sense from the words that you are choosing. I can sense that you you are a leader. Okay. So let me tell you that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, uh, sir. Uh, so I don't you, know yet, you, but I you can to. you know if you if put in situations you can lead. I'm entrepreneurship and leadership. What does it mean? And we can also discuss management and innovation. What does that mean? Okay, because these are very, very <laughs> people just use these words without meaning anything. <laughs> I've seen people using them very emptily and in a very empty manner. I don't want you guys to use these words in a very empty fashion. These these actually mean yes, something. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Innovation, can I tell? Haan, please go ahead. Sir, innovation is something like uh, if 10 people looking at a thing. 
and the, all the other nines found it similar and the one who is thinking that no there is another something because which but, others but, don't know but what is the purpose of looking at it from a different perspective sir if you look at it in the different like uh, if you uh, think e sports gaming if you know about that uh e sports means uh, online gaming uh, many of the people played it but nobody earned from it an innovator will think about it how can he put uh, such work so can he can innovate those things like so, so where is the uh, so where so where is the perspective so business like you said entrepreneur entrepreneur should be innovative mean so where where is uh, uh, all the players who were playing from long ago they didn't thought about to earn from their so where team. is the question is where is the perspective coming in for the innovator from uh, perspective um, what is the source uh, so he is looking no at idea. it from a fresh uh, perspective you you told it that he wants to look at it as a fresh perspective where he gain something so where is that coming yes, from sir. sir from his self i don't know the technical but i don't know uh, the idea yes is yes, yes. No, it, you drop the word confidence it is from the self right but the self is aligning to the purpose ah, yes, of the thing and then uh, you want to Thank also you, go, for, go for management and what is the difference between leadership and management So leadership and management uh, are, I think, is different. But leaders should be manageable. But uh, leadership right. is something you put mm -hmm. efforts like uh, in management. You need to manage your time and also like if a leader is telling you something, you have to manage. Uh, like uh, whose main point it is. Like in your team, you have to define that who knows what work is best. And for management, you will give that work to them. so he can do better and efficiently so you will manage your time and your ideas and your energy so you get fair enough good good harsh i am very happy that you have these def anybody else wants to go for this innovation leadership management entrepreneurship these terms okay okay see so an entrepreneur is a person who works on a new business to make money even if it has a chance to fail okay an entrepreneur works on a new business to make money so he takes a risk and risk is the most important thing what is risk can anyone tell me what is risk it is the probability of things not going the way you have thought of right so an entrepreneur basically is able to so there can be n number of ways to make money okay there are actually four ways to make money one is being employed when we say employed we mean that you are working for someone he is or she or the company is paying you something in return and you are not concerned with more than that right so hum this is basically one level of consciousness where you are basically just working all you are concerned with is basically the month end paycheck so if you will look at 99% people around you You will find that everyone क्या पगार कितना मिल रहा है सैलरी कितना मिल रहा है राइट है ना क्या मिल रहा है सो सो सच अ पर्सन विल ऑलवेज थिंक वॉट एम आई गेटिंग ओके सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट लेवल ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस वी कैन से दिस इज इम्प्लॉय कॉन्शियसनेस ओके दिस इज बेसिकली एंड इट्स नॉट इट समेर एंड दे डू रिसेंटली वेल i was also employed i also did decently well right post iit we get a very nice fat package so we were employed and we were doing very well right so now the second level above this basically employment is the entrepreneur okay 
or the person who is employing himself first okay so when he when we say he is so an entrepreneur employs his himself as well as the people who work for him okay and he is linked with basically something called return so he is looking for a return of the effort so he is calibrating both an employee is only looking for the return he is not looking at his the effort that he is making but the moment he starts calibrating the effort of himself and others and build this he gets into that mindset and managing management is about this okay but entrepreneurship whenever you start so i can very well go For the customer, right? You are going to more more create the value to the customer. Okay. Now, when I say value to the customer, what does it mean? It means that the entrepreneur is undertaking that I will create this value for you. So, when you buy, for example, an Apple phone or you buy a Samsung uh, tab, you know that somebody is going to give you that value. So, you are committing a value, and as the value is delivered. it becomes a brand okay so an entrepreneur works on a new idea he says that this is a gap in the market i am going to fulfill this gap i am going to fulfill this better than my competition i am going to fulfill this with my customer being very happy and i am going to do it repetitively so that i can build a brand and people start basically putting their faith on me so an entrepreneur works on three things and the market also works on those three dimensions with the entrepreneur these are these dimensions can be best described as one is the level of belief second is the level of trust and third is the level of faith okay and all these three terms are different from each other uh, i hope all of you agree that belief trust and faith are different i'll tell you the difference so suppose belief is basically that okay i believe that this is true but it might not be true it's an unverified reality that i have never thought that whether it will be true or not so an entrepreneur starts with his hypothesis he starts with that okay this particular market might exist right and once that market so he goes for a basically testing or a validation of the customer and the market with that hypothesis and value proposition and once that value proposition is uh, proven he builds a product or a service out of it and then he starts offering it to people so entrepreneurship has two parts one is the hypothesis creation and testing and second is the product service scaling out of it okay so the first phase is that you basically build a hypothesis and you go in the market and test the hypothesis and if you are able to deliver the hypothesis you basically think that oh value is created value is exchanged then you basically start scaling that value as a product or as a service okay so this is the first fundamental of entrepreneurship okay now uh, what i meant about belief is that it's an unverified truth but when you actually do the hypothesis you gain trust on that right so the difference between belief and trust is that trust only comes when you start implementing on your belief if you don't if you believe something but you don't implement it the trust won't come okay and then from belief to trust as you do more and more and more and more you start building faith and the market also starts building faith you know uh, one of the interesting things about uh, what is the difference between trust and faith so trust and trustworthiness trust is also itself a risk although a lesser risk uh, although uh, although for the other side a lesser risk than a believable idea if somebody trusts you it means that he he is uh, he has more confidence in you right uh, but when we say it is faith faith means that there is a very deep trust that this will work okay so there are certain things which we buy without thinking you know without thinking about the trustworthiness of them and what is the formula for trustworthiness 
ट्रस्टवर्दीनेस इज इक्वल टू क्रेडिबिलिटी इन टू रिलायबिलिटी इन टू फेमिलियरिटी डिवाइडेड बाई सेल्फ ओरिएंटेशन ओके आई विल टीच यू दिस समे एल्स वेन वी विल टॉक अबाउट वैल्यू प्रोपोजिशन मोर बट ट्रस्ट वर्दीनेस एंड ट्रस्ट वर्क टूगेदर बट एज द ट्रस्ट वर्दीनेस इंक्रीजेस फेथ इंक्रीजेस and that's how big brands are built do you ever think that how coca cola is made before drinking coca cola no you just pick it up and drink you never think about the quality because there's a element of almost faith on the quality of coca cola right or, or there's an element of faith on the quality of maggi although there are so many things about the preservatives etc etc being told yeah so so what is happening the if you compare the auto wala to a brand like maggi or a brand like apple what is the difference the difference is that this auto wala is also delivering a value by employing his time but apple is also delivering uh, a value by employing time of so many people but it is about the credibility reliability and familiarity of the two services and the amount of value they are generating which is the difference between these two businesses right uh, so one thing that i wanted to tell you was is that entrepreneurship is about risk taking and it is a person who starts a new business even though it has a chance to fail taking risks is the game because if you play safe 99% people play safe they are all into jobs right but the second class of consciousness is basically this where people say that i am returned on invest my time is my investment or my uh, i can gather people up and so now what is the other part of uh, entrepreneurship and why uh, why would an entrepreneur succeed the answer is leadership okay so as uh, harsh told you know so leadership what is a le who is a leader a leader is a person who can create and integrate people to a future okay so he can create a future and integrate people most of us if you look if you pause for a moment and or you just get up in the morning you see how many things come in your mind which are from past you know so most of the people that i see live in their past you know they are either either not satisfied about things around them they are either thinking how will we do this they are either their life is about problem or they, it's about challenges but the moment you are able to complete your past and create a future and live that future every day you will only have possibilities and when you start having possibilities you start only having opportunities okay now the difference between possibility and opportunity and all of this i'll also explain so what happens is that when we are in the present okay and just just observe yourself when you are in the present any thought how many of the thoughts are coming to you are coming from your experience and how many thoughts are about a future that you have created i am very sure that if you will see that 95% of your thoughts are coming from past and 5% may be coming from a future that you might have most of us are actually projecting a future from our past we are not creating a future and then seeing whether we can learn up how to do it most of us are not conscious creators and because we are not conscious creators we are not able to lead others because pe people want to be led and people want a future what is the uh, thing that a, a, a pm of or a cm of uh, any uh, uh, country does he creates and integrates people to the future that's why he wins that election what does a great ceo does he basically creates a future and integrates people now when you integrate people there is only two things one is concern and one is interest a person who will not have a future will have either concern or interest the moment you are able to authentically listen to that person and incorporate his concern and interest in the future you are able to lead him it is very simple but for that you have to live the future continuously that's why we say that a leader lives the future in the present he is always in the future he is always living the future and since he is always living the future he is able to connect all the dots and to the future he is able to connect every person that he meets to the future now there is another interesting thing if you are living a future but not connecting to present it is called fantasy so dreamers poets uh, musicians 
all of the art 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 many a times if it is not brought in and expressed it will be fantasy okay but when it is expressed it becomes a possibility huh? so when future is basically connected to present it is possibility when future is only in future no present it is basically a uh, fantasy when there is only present no future it is called reality okay so the idea is that we are moving in a world where we just have realities around us we are not able to create a future and create possibilities for ourselves right and the reason for this is a very interesting reason it's called it's it's a part in our brain called neural cortex you can note that so many of us don't have our neural cortex activated the reason is that the conditioning that we have got and the education system that we have have it has taught us to dull down it has taught us to be like that it has taught us to not uh, basically take up uh, new things in our life we have told to do things in a particular way and that dulls you down so all of you when you were kids you had it but it got dulled down as you basically grew up so one of the major aspects of leadership is the ability to create a future and ability to integrate people to that future okay the interesting part is that an innovator will create a future a leader might simply share a future you know you need not create a future in order to lead people by the way you can simply take up a future for example the pm of this country says that uh, we got to be atmanirbhar now he has created a vision for us right now we can share that vision with them and create a future for ourselves we need not be the original innovator for that or inventor of that future so leadership and entrepreneurship can also happen if you, even if you share a future a, a a a product and service exists in the market you want to you want to create a similar product and service it's okay but that too is a future so create that future write it down connect it to the present build a plan build a possibility and that's how entrepreneurship happens okay and leadership is about connecting people to that plan if people are not connected to the plan they will not function and that is why leadership is the people centricity around the entrepreneurship aspect okay now what is management management is tracking this so you have you are at a you want you have this creating b where you want to go is is leadership but the risk of being at b is entrepreneurship and and managing people going from a to b is management okay right so this is the difference okay now an innovator will also basically bring in the incremental value proposition okay he will also think that okay such a my future exists and people such a reality exists and people are already expressing this if i stretch this to this or if i completely change this perspective then what will be the future so the innovator the entrepreneur and the leader all stay in the future because they are leading in some or the other way an innovator will lead on technology an entrepreneur will lead on the value uh uh, uh a leader will lead towards a future the most important tenet is how to be free of the past and how to always live a future and connect it to present this transformation is the most important transformation that every person has to have if he wants to become an entrepreneur because most of the people are not living that most of the people are living are kal mere yahan aisa ho gaya tha mere month ke end pe mujhe the bills dene hain wo ye karna hai wo karna hai everybody is living like that okay so one of the most important things is to be able to live the future and there are certain transformation that are required before you are able to do that okay and those transformations can be told to you you can all cultivate that mindset and you can all do this but the most important thing is risk you should be able to take risks in life and i'm telling you your generation is very well placed to take risks uh, i was selected in uh, one of the exams which was uh, it's a it's a railway exam that doesn't happen now uh, it, it's like equivalent to ias it's called scra it used to happen at our end and only 10 seats were there i was air 7 and i left that because i did not want to do my parents everybody wanted me to do that right but i didn't do that why because i didn't want to do it i just wanted to take more risk in life and trust me it has been very rewarding uh, and it has been very good 
So, and it does not mean that risk taking risk will always reward you. It will generally be like that, but it may, it might backfire as well. So you got to be prepared and you got to be integrated with your decisions that you, you are taking this decision, right? So risk taking is the most important thing in entrepreneurship because it can be a very safe thing also that, okay, I will do this. I will do this kind of service. I will make this much money and I'm happy like this. No, it is about the value that you are creating by making money and that which does not exist maybe right now or you are bringing an altogether different thing. I can hear you uh, Tanmay. So yeah, thanks. So, uh, <clears throat> so what are we saying is the following that uh, if you think of, for example, Elon Musk as an entrepreneur, right? What he's offering is just so much more than what his competitors are, that it's a new future that he has brought in. Okay. And why has he been able to do that? Because he could create a future. So all you guys have to do is create a future and connect it to the present and your entrepreneurship will start happening. In fact, that future to present translation will give you the confidence to take the risk. But if you don't have a future, risk will look this big. It will look like a mountain in front of you. But if you look at the future, then the risk will look very minimal. It will just a very small cost that you're paying, right? So that is the most important thing, okay? Did you get what, in a sense, I told you about entrepreneurship, leadership, innovation, and uh, management, yeah? And can you, uh, uh, you can also ask me any questions that you have. Yeah, any questions? Any things coming to your mind? Think that this is possible? Is this even possible? Ta or you can share with me that when was the last time you took any risk? You tend to do that whenever it's about in exams, etc. Also, you take a lot of risks. But uh, but playing it safe is not entrepreneurship, by the way. Playing it safe is not entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is about risk-taking. And innovation is also about risk-taking. The last webinar that I told you, innovation is more about technological uncertainty that you are handling. Maybe this is possible. Maybe this is not possible. I You might have watched these Rocket Boys, the TV series that has come on Homi Bhava and Vikram Sarabhai. Uh, practically shows that that they were they were absolute risk takers and with their core belief trust and faith in science that led them to do that so you got to have your core belief trust and uh, and faith in something it can be yourself it can be any discipline it can be science it can be engineering in anything that you love to do and that will take you to the path of entrepreneurship and innovation any questions guys I see a lot of potential in all of you, you know, I'll tell you, can you, can anyone of you tell me which generation do you belong to? What is the name of your generation? Students, your chat hmm? box is open. Uh, you can write the message in the chat also. Which, which generation are you from? Do you know? The 21st. <laughs> no, your generation is called a name. It's called Gen Z. Have you heard about this? Gen Z. No, Have you heard about millennials? No. Okay, I'll tell you something very interesting. Okay. So post the world war, there have been almost eight, seven, eight generations. Okay. So the first generation that post war was called post war generation. So my Father, for example, he comes from 1947. He was born on 15th August, 1947. So he comes from a post-war generation, which has seen grossly across the world, whether you are from India or whether you are from US, the mindset there, it, it is basically, uh, the mindset there is basically uh, uh, that, uh, you know, that there is scarcity of resource. There is scarcity. We might not be able to make through. Uh, there is, there is, there is, uh, non probability of that there is no active healthcare available there is less food to eat so that was the mindset in which they grew up right then a generation came which was called the bloomers the people who were born post 55 to 60 huh? then they basically came up with a vision that okay no it is about competition if i can beat my competition then things will change 
you know then there were there was another generation called the late bloomers which came around 60s 70s they were like okay competition is important but uh, and uh, beating the competition is important but also maybe better opportunities exist outside so let us leave this country and go outside okay and that trend has continued till now also right because we are not able to create opportunities for ourselves we run after opportunities okay and that is why we go out okay so uh, so then the late bloomers in the came in 70s was replaced by something called uh, late bloomers continued till 85 okay right from 70 to 85 are late bloomers then 85 to 2000 people who are born it between this are called millennials they saw a new century a new century where transition where in their childhood they have seen uh, actually they have seen the very large computers also and now they are using these tabs in fact they are making these so that's my generation okay but your generation has seen uh, all of you i presume have been born around 2000 so your generation has basically seen uh, just technology and technology doing really really well after y2k so all of you are called gen z you guys have the maximum risk taking appetite because you are born in abundance your father has already taken care of your standard of living your grandfather has already taken care of your survivability okay but your for example your grandfather's grandfather did not take care of his survivability and he had to ensure that your father has ensured your standard of living okay so now it is time for you to take a risk and build something that is great okay and the problem the only problem that you will have ar around this is the societal impact societal conditioning that you should do a job you should do it because they come from a generation where they have seen that job is the way you know so that is why most of the people don't take risks so if you listen to steve wozniak steve wozniak was the co-founder of apple he told that indians are very less creative when it comes to business the reason behind that is very simple that we are not taking enough risks so we are not we are killing creativity in us we are saying i'll do a mundane job 9 to 5 because i earn this much and i have a family and i have this and i have that and i'll give 10 reasons why i can't do it but the truth is that we have some inherent fear that has been conditioned in us which basically uh, prevents us from taking risks and the best time to take risk is college if you can employ your non academic hours in building something snap snapchat was built by a kid in school right similar was thing with zuckerberg right so if you can build something while you are in school that's the best time you can do it okay uh, it can give you a flavor of entrepreneurship at least and then if you like that lifestyle if you like that mindset and if you are okay about that then you can basically take care of it in the future as well but it is something that is not taught in the colleges now but now with the nep coming in and with the government's thrust i am a part of the national mission for interdisciplinary cyber physical systems uh, it's a dst mission uh, i am uh, think part of the think tank i'm also a part of the cii think tank uh, for so i'm telling you that the this this generation of yours can do entrepreneurship and has a much more probability of building something great than the previous generations in india okay and india is changing and it's a land of opportunities i do tell you that if you can build something it will be great okay okay just give me a moment all coming yeah yeah so this is something that you can scan do now any questions you have for example if i ask you to start up or if i ask you to start a company would you be able to write an idea about uh, what you will be offering to the clients will it be can you take that as an assignment and can you submit that all of you if you were to start a company what will that company do and what will i want to i want to initiate you guys in this thought process hmm? if you can write this assignment and give it to me i am ready to fund it i am saying it here okay <laughs> beg your pardon yes okay uh, so i'm saying that if you have an idea and if you can write it down on the piece of paper i will discuss with you the business plan and i'm ready to fund it okay 
so that is the level at which the capital is available everything is available okay so everything is available just that you guys have to tap into it and in order to tap into it you have to create a future if you cannot create a future about a product service value that you would be creating then uh, there is a challenge so this 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 mindset has been inactivated by 16 years of education that you have received so you have to unlearn a lot of it then you can think new okay so i would want and encourage you guys to personally contact me or contact me via psit iic uh, basically and uh, submit your ideas and i will definitely look into them and if they are good fundable if they are good i would look ahead to uh, incorporate them and help you with seed money help you with uh, that right but it is a path that has to be taken by you it is a path that where you have the belief where you have the trust and where you will have the faith right so it is about faith and focus faith gives you what you call the source from where you are deriving your energy and focus gives you the strategy strategy is nothing but how you will realize your vision the vision to present is strategy the possibility happening and happening in time is strategy and when you further strategize it in terms of milestones it becomes a plan and when you execute the plan it becomes action so by reviewing your action plan and strategy you can have absolute integrity in your entrepreneurship okay so we, i can all teach of this to you teach all this to you okay and I, we can i can mentor you but you got to have a future i cannot create that future for you okay you got to create the future if you have to be the entrepreneur if you have to be an employee then it's great we can create a future of course all companies are creating a future and you are subscribing to that by joining that company although you are not aware of the future that they are building but you are more aware with the brand that they have built over time so again that choice is coming from the past about that about your past about that company it's not coming from a future okay so that is one difference between employee mindset and entrepreneurship mindset and employee mindset and innovators mindset so that you can learn okay any questions or we can uh, close down this session also uh, yep uh, so uh, as i know that you are a, a successful entrepreneur so what was your major difficulty in it i mean in the initial stages not funding and all that so how you manage that no so funding is never see what is funding okay i'll just understand this see uh, funding is a, again a fad which has been created by vcs okay venture capitalists huh? the reason is that they want to make money while you work this is the fourth class of people is called investors so the first class is basically employees who work for others self employees work for themselves businessmen people work for them and investors money works for them okay so this is the fourth class of invest uh, people in investors where money works for them so what they do is that they employ their capital with you so you are employed and they employ their capital with you so now the conditioning that has been done is that you cannot build a company without funding but you look at zeroda zeroda has been built without funding algoit my company it's a 30 million dollar company mm -hmm. built without without uh, uh, funds built right from customers money it is possible because in the end the funding is just going to sustain you for the time when the customer does not give you money but if the customer does not give you money the problem is that you are going to end up in losses and many of these venture capitalist business the funded businesses like even facebook etc and even companies like palantir etc are making losses they are making losses so many times what happens is that when investors and when vcs look at it they look at the perennial game like they look at okay how many years till will people use facebook and then what happens is that facebook has to then convert itself into meta because it is facing pressure from the vcs that oh, my money is employed and you have burnt 500 um, billion dollars of mine into this what are you doing so then mark zuckerberg comes up with a new idea he says that i'll build meta i'll build i'll integrate instagram and all of these things together in a new platform where we'll have ar vr based uh, all these things so now a new technology future has been created so there are two kinds of businesses that are happening harsh 
one which are making profits one which are not making profits if you have to sustain without uh, funding you have to make profits and that's where you have to focus on what is the revenue that you are getting what is the profit you are getting but if you want to get funding money and you want to run a loss generating company and scale it then venture funding is great i i am not a big supporter of that you know uh, until unless you are doing so, a thing which is so fundamentally new that it can happen for example something like tesla because it is creating a lot of value or something like amazon which is creating a sub, so much value but if you know and check out whom did bezo get funded from he did not actually take up a fund bezo in fact funded google bezo put in around 400000 dollars in google and when the money in google returned then he started putting in money in amazon the first thing that he built was he was selling books and he was making profit so you got to know how to sustain without funding if you can do that then you are an actually entrepreneur otherwise you are a vc funded employee again <laughs> Okay. Thank you, sir. So that is the most important thing. Yeah. Go ahead. Any other question? See, one of the things that will happen is that funding definitely scales you because this is called inorganic growth. For example, your company is doing say. Uh, 40 crores of business and all of a sudden you have now when the 40 crore value will be delivered the customer will give you that value and the customer will give you that money then money will be collected and reemployed after giving the salaries of the people or uh, giving the costs for the people so suppose you made 10 crore profit now if you have 10 crore of funding also you mean that you can employ 20 crore more right so then basically it means that you can scale the business by employing this 20 crore so funding is great but at what cost is it coming? Just check out that all the billion dollar unicorns that are coming up, how much equities do, do the founders finally have? And how much equity do VCs have? You will find that. So funding definitely eases the operation. It definitely helps you scale, but it is not a way, just a way to build a very sustainable business. There are very less VC companies that have actually made to the exit. And there are companies like Zoho, which have done so well. Right? There are companies like Zeroda, which I've done so well with least VC money. Okay. So when to take VC money is the most important thing. Firstly, you have to test your hypothesis, build a credible product and service, and then scale that product and service to as many people. And then basically see if I put in money, how will the scale? Before you come up with this derivation that if I put money, it will not scale. You, If you put money, then it will be burnt because their validation has not happened. So your first six months and 12 months should be about validating the idea. That's what I did. Now I am, of course, raising money. But if you take a money, take up money at idea stage, A, you will lose up equity. B, your money might just be lost. So as you basically build onto your entrepreneurship through your resilience and tenacity, the idea becomes much more proven and your value increases. And investors are ready to put in money at a lower equity. That's what you want to do. But this initial challenge of uh, frugal, for example, my salary reduced from uh, 3 lakh rupees a month to almost uh, 60,000 rupees when I started the company. And it remained so for almost six months. Are you ready to take that cut? All of these things are very important. This is the hardcore nature of entrepreneurship. Back in 2017, I, my salary reduced almost from 3 lakhs to 60,000. Yeah. So all of these risks have to be taken. Without taking risks, you will not get return. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, which services your company provide to its clients? We are into AI products for manufacturing companies. For example, there's a lot of manufacturing companies which basically work. So, yeah, for example, the petrol and the diesel that you use, Indian oil, is our client. Then, uh, so we work with all the refineries. There are eight refineries uh, of Indian oil. So, like, sorry, nine refineries of Indian oil. Then HPCL, BPCL, uh, HMEL, uh, all of these are there. Then Hindalco. So, my 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 product is into a sector which is uh, very less known to all of you because you all come from a consumer's. Uh, so when you drink Coca-Cola in a can, the can is manufactured by aluminum, which is produced by Hindalco. 
when you use your laptop, the aluminium is put in by Hindalco, the plane, the aluminium is put in by Hindalco. So we work on making Hindalco more efficient. We work on Indian oil, making Indian oil more efficient. We work on providing plastic factories, these factories better software so that they can run better. And all of this is artificial intelligence powered. So if you guys want to work in my company, it, you're most welcome. Uh, I will be running a course on AI business analysis as well, which would be I think, for the MBAs, but we are definitely training you guys as well. And we would be offering you on internships also, if it is possible, I'm talking to the uh, to your dean for regarding that. So you guys are most welcome to do internships and these internships will be thought provoking and transformational for you when you work with us. Uh, but, um, uh, but, you know, at the same time, I would also want you to venture on your own idea, on your idea, on your value proposition. That is entrepreneurship. Okay. Uh, so, any other questions? Yeah. So, what is the criteria of the industry? Like, so what are you looking for? Like, recruiting or marketing strategies or a new innovation or something? No. For the internship? Are you asking for the internship? Yes. Okay. So, so for the internship, we have two roles. One is basically the product analysis role where you are basically working with the clients to understand the user requirement and how the product has to shape up. And then there are internships around the coding aspects of it. So where you will be coding on the data science or the front end or the back end or basically working on data science like uh, computer vision or time series or natural language processing uh, or GIS maybe, you know, those areas. Right. So I look ahead to your participation, guys, but always remember, take risks in life. Risks are not bad. I'm telling you. Maybe uh, you might be thinking, but and this I'm telling you after taking risks. <laughs> I'm not someone who's not taking risk and just soliciting it to you. I've taken risks. I've been rewarded. I know that. Okay. Sir, if I have an idea, where I do put you? Beg your pardon? Sir, if I have an idea about mm. something, mm. I can discuss with you, sir. Yes, yes, you can. I'll just, in fact, uh, I cannot uh, see the messages, but you can definitely take my AI ID and you can send me the thingy there. Or I can circulate a form also with you guys if you have an idea. Please share. Yes, sir. I put my ID, I put it to, it has gone to some Prerna Srivastava. If you could, Prerna, send it to them uh, all, it would be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, guys, thank you so much for your time. And any other questions do you have, or we can ask uh, Professor Raghuraj or Professor. Uh, Dr. Nishant to uh, complete. Sure, sir, sir. So thank you, sir, for sharing your ideas with us and uh, clear the difference among entrepreneur, leader, and management innovation and all. And I hope students uh, learned a lot from this session and it also motivates motivate us to think about the startups ideas. And uh, sir, I can understand that how uh, difficult for you for getting time uh, from your busy schedule for this session. <laughs> So, and uh, thank you, uh, Nishan sir, Rajat sir, Dhaneshwar sir, and Prerna ma'am, uh, Salesh Vyas sir also for coordinating this event. Once again, thank you, Nandan sir. We will thank see you, you uh, yeah. very soon. Bye, guys. Bye. Look ahead to interact with you more when I'm on the campus. We are working very closely with your campus now. Yes, we will be working on multiple internships with you, multiple fellowships with you. Please, please be a part of that. Thank you. Take sure, care. sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir.